Good morning, everyone. Today is April 28th, Thursday. Here's a quick little update of the markets with my TT Charger application. This is a price modeling system, uh, follows longer term trend, uh, tracks market breadth, um, and is very, very solid overall. Um, we can see that the markets have rolled bearish because of this trigger here, these little uh, red diamonds. These are bullish trending here with the blue diamonds. You can see we have a baseline of support right across here. We're holding above these uh, historic lows, recent lows right across here in the S&P, which is very interesting. And this will likely become a very critical price level as uh, the markets move forward. So understand that price being the ultimate indicator is likely to retest or find support at this level uh, over the next couple of weeks. We'll see what the Fed does. My thinking is the Fed's likely going to just move a quarter percent, um, moving very aggressively after the markets have rolled here uh, to the downside. So now understand that we are in a bearish trending because of this rotation here. We've pulled back. We're in downward trending. We don't have strength in bearish trending, which would show up here with these red indicators showing uh, bearish market breadth and trending is accelerating. So we're in a consolidation phase. We may be finding support. It's very interesting to see how this plays out. Now let's take a look at the NASDAQ, which has already moved into some bearish trending, bearish strength here over the last couple of days. But we're still, again, retesting these lows, which understand that price must break below these lows in order to actually trend downward. The... Price itself is the ultimate indicator, and if it is unable to break below these lows over the next couple of weeks, we may be setting up a nice intermediate bottom here for a longer term uh, move. We'll see how this plays out, and I do want to highlight the fact that if we look at this chart going all the way back to the 2015, or sorry, 2008 lows, I'm going to just try to point out here, oops, a little too much, that we could be setting up for a very interesting move that people are failing to understand. And that is a shift in dynamics causing the markets to move quite a bit higher. Now, let me try to do this in a mode here. In standard thinking, just basic standard thinking, if we were to consider this move to the 2015-16 levels as a wave A, I'll try to make this as thick as possible so you can see it. Change the color to a bright yellow. And uh, set, set as default. Now understand that if we consider this wave A, and then we have a wave B scenario here, and what I'm trying to tell you is we may have set up a rotation here where this could be this entire move could be uh, a wave C. So understand that we could be in a wave C move from here to here. We could be in a wave D move from here to here, setting up a, a very solid correction and setting up a D move or sorry, an E move possibly from here well up above these levels here. A D, an E move should be equal to or greater than the C move higher. So if this fails to move lower over the next couple of weeks or months, or even if it does and find support in this mode, we could be very much into a, an unprecedented uh, rally phase over the next five or six years where um, where everything takes off with the amount of money the Fed has put in, if the, especially if the Fed realizes the pricing pressure that's being put on the market, moves to try to keep rates somewhere below one or one and a quarter percent, we could be looking at a, an explosive move to the upside that people are failing to really understand. So now under, let's take a look over here at the uh, industrial average. And uh, we clear this because this was the pullback from before. And again, this is uh, when you look at this, it becomes a little clearer. 
So we have an A move roughly from here to here, a B move from here to here, a C move, the way I'm counting it, from here to the beginning of COVID. Actually, uh, let me rephrase this. Yeah, let's call this. And then we have possibly a D move here, and we could be in an E, e move here. Now understand that D and E, sorry, C and E should be relatively equal in size. What I'm going to do is I want to move this down to here and highlight the fact that we're already above it. So we could, if we find support here in this move here, we could see a move from this level, from these lows, potentially up into this 45,000 area. So it's going to be, it's going to be critical for the markets to try to hold at this support level if this is going to happen. And this could happen. The way it would happen, I'll explain it to you. It's very simple. So credit risk, debt risk across the globe are falling, uh, uh, falling hard. China's falling because of the excesses of the economy and the COVID crisis. Um, and again, an extended contraction in global markets of say six to, to 15% year over year throughout the next couple of years could put a lot of these uh, global nations and emerging markets at risk of default. This would change the dynamics of the market, especially if the U.S. economy continues to strengthen or show moderate strength compared to these other economies. Um, and that would cause capital to rush into the U.S. assets, potentially setting up this next C move. So you can see here A, B, C, possibly D, E. Um, now understand that this is hypothetical, but as long as price continues to hold and try to find support, there's a pretty good chance we could see a move higher. Now let's go over here and check, take, check out the SPY. And of course, I've got some extra lines in here. Let me see if I can get rid of the drawing tools real quick. Uh, remove all drawing tools. And what we'll do again is from the lows, we're looking at an A move here. I would call it a B move here. A C move here. A D move here. And a possible E move to here. Now again, if this E move, which is the final wave, tries to find support at this level and starts to rally back higher, we could be looking at an A, B, C correction, which could put the Dow Jones, or this is the SPY, excuse me, up into the 610, 620 level from where we're at. So be prepared. We are at critical levels. If we take a look at this chart, and spread it out, auto scale. You can see that we have moved into bearish trending. We have not seen any market breadth and we're holding again across these recent support levels. Price being the ultimate indicator here means that we need to see either this breakdown and establish a new trend, which would confirm a potential lower low and obviously, guys, if we were going to try to guess as to where it could go, my guess would be down into this level, would probably try to find some support, um, and that would be an acceptable pullback range for a potential rally phase that could be equal to this phase from the COVID lows. So understand that we're very, very interesting in how the markets are setting up and what's actually happening in the sense that the markets are likely to be rolling around looking for support. And my thinking is that global assets are going to be shifting away from at risk foreign markets, uh, potentially Europe, potentially uh, Asia, potentially North Africa, uh, and obviously China and Asia with the debt and credit concerns. And that means that assets could be piling into Canadian assets, U.S. assets, possibly South American assets and Japanese assets seeking safety. We're seeing that already with the U.S. dollar moving substantially higher. So be prepared. 
Um, right now, we're at a critical junction. We need to see how the market holds up, see what happens over the next couple of weeks with the Fed. I'm thinking the Fed's going to probably come out with just a quarter point raise, see what happens with the markets. And again, right now, this area in here, as far as support, is going to become critical over the next couple of weeks. If we see the markets pull back into this 370 range on the SPY and hold, we could be looking at another substantial, possibly 40 or 50 percent rally in the U.S. markets that nobody thinks is going to happen right now. So remember, you heard it here first and uh, follow my research. Go to ment.com, ment.com, create an account, follow my research. My modeling systems are showing you what's going on. We do not have any extended breadth to the downside yet, just in the NASDAQs. And the NASDAQ itself, if I can show you here, um, hypothetically, if we take a look at the NASDAQ itself, and you, we were to provide a standard deviation range. Let's just pick this low back here and come across to here. And we'll probably have to go a little higher. Let's go back up to here. Yeah, this will work. Um, right now, ladies and gentlemen, the NASDAQ is dancing around a standard deviation channel, which means that it has reverted back to... Uh, middle levels, actually below middle levels here, and I believe that we're going to be looking to try to find support down in this 12,000 area or higher. Right now, if this level, what I'm calling the 13050 uh, level, continues to hold, we may find very strong support right over here and potentially mount a new rally that no one is really expecting. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you later.